Thanks for joining us today. We have a fun-filled show, so let's get it started with everyone's favorite flavor of the day, the Sun Scoop. Now, are you guys ready for the question of the day? Suns or Mavs, who you got in how many games? I'll go with the Suns again. I'm sticking with them all the way. Um, I say game six. I did. Mm, I'm gonna have to be the opposer here <laughs> and go with the Mavs. And I'm, I'm gonna say maybe game seven for the Mavs. Game seven, um, this could be either way. Probably going Suns game six as well. Yeah, we'll have to see games though. Oh, yeah. Uh, Luca would be dominant as ever, but he doesn't have any help. That's the only thing. Yeah, that's true. Suns are too well rounded, and they, Luca doesn't have any help on his team. So, Suns and six. That's enough talking about basketball for now. Now, let's switch on over to football. Last Thursday was the 2022 NFL draft, and like every single draft, every single year, there was many shocks slash trades and some angry fans who didn't like their picks, like me. And with the first overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars selected Trayvon Walker, edge from Georgia University. Surprisingly, he wasn't really projected to be number one. He was around two and three, so it was a surprise by the Jags. With the second overall pick, the Lions selected Aiden Hutchinson. Now, this came up as a surprise because Aiden was projected as the number one pick on many other analysts' draft boards. So, and the third overall pick was Houston Texans, and this was by far the biggest surprise in the early in the draft. I mean, they selected Derek Stingley Jr., the cornerback from LSU. Now, I'm not hating on Derek Stingley Jr., but it's also his freshman year was his only good year. The last two, uh, he didn't produce as many good stats as he did freshman year from the LSU team, you know, with Joe Burrow and all of them. <laughs> now I look over to Jordan and ask, you're a Cardinals fan, how did the Cardinals do night one? Actually, Diego, I'm not a Cardinals fan, I'm a Saints fan, but I have been keeping up with the Cardinals in this off season. I'm honestly surprised that they went with the trade. They waited for a trade for a wide receiver um, just because we knew they were going to need one, some somebody strong and reliable after losing Christian Kirk in free agency. I'm kind of excited for this move just because we'll get to see quarterback Kyler Murray and Brown reunited after their 2017-2018 season together back in Oklahoma. Um, I think Murray will have something to look forward to now that he's officially staying with the Cardinals. And it'll also give Brown something to look forward to after losing his quarterback, Lamar Jackson, who he did create a bond with back in Baltimore. So overall, I think um, Brown is going to be a good asset to the Cardinals. And just in this morning, the Saints just signed Tyron Matthew. So that's good news for the Saints. I'm pretty excited. Still not going to do nothing. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, Landon, you're a Bengals fan. Everyone knows that. Everyone. How they do? I mean, honestly, they made some, in my opinion, I mean, they made some not so smart picks by drafting, they drafted a safety from Michigan, Daxton Hill, which I don't think was not the smartest pick because we already have two strong, strong safeties in the backfield. We have Jesse Bates, which is a very strong safety, and Von Bell who can go along with that, which drafting another safety, I don't really know what the, the whole idea of that was. I just don't think they were making well picks. Well, also, they could use it on a, like a nickel bag, kind of like a slot corner type. Yeah. I mean, that's a good option. He did very well in uh, Michigan, so we'll see. So now enough about the Bengals. Um, Diego, I know you're a big Dallas Cowboys fan. Um, what about them? <laughs> Terrible. Terrible. They did not do good things. I'm sorry. Terrible. Oh, that was not. Terrible. That's all I got to say. Um, I don't what, know. Was it that bad? Yes. We selected a tackle from Tulsa. Yeah. He's good and all, but he's still new. He got a lot of holding calls in college. Uh, we could have got a defensive edge and Jermaine Johnson, which was still there until number 28 when the Jets came back and picked him up. Could have got Jermaine Johnson, one of the top four defensive ends in that draft. Could have got. Um, <laughs> Could have got with a lot. Well, Could have got Draxton Hill, that I 
we do need a safety. I yeah. would have loved him. Ah, uh, shoot. Who was the last dude that I wanted? Jermaine Johnson. Oh, uh, Devin Lloyd, linebacker. We just cut Jalen Smith. Leighton Vanderish has not been producing well. And uh, only good side is uh, Mark, uh, Micah Parsons. That's it. Yeah. We could have got someone good. Well, you know, Shut it's up. the Cowboys. So it is the Cowboys, so not we couldn't have expected anything much. They do. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Mm, okay, so with that being said, what do you guys think? What do you think on Marquise Brown? Is he going to produce well, or is he going to be kind of like mm, that iffy guy that he ended off with? I'm not sure. He's, he dropped more passes than touchdowns. So he only had six <laughs> touchdowns last season, and he dropped seven passes. So we'll see how he works with Murray. Which means he's not efficient <laughs> at all. <laughs> then again, not very, uh, but... You can't blame him because uh, Jackson got injured. and That's true. He was producing. He was like a top... 10 receiver last year, midway through the season, until Lamar Jackson, Jackson, Jackson got hurt. Yeah. What do you think on Jackson Hill? I don't think, uh, um, like you said, he could be a good nickelback for us, but maybe, <laughs> he may bring something to the table. It's 50-50 for now. Add a little flavor. <laughs> if you're asking for me, I don't believe Smith at all. Oh well, let's we'll see. Don't believe in the cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, y'all, we're at the end right there. Our AI.